my name is Dan Clark. I'm uh, doing this video for MBA 710. Just going to talk a little bit about the history um, I have uh, in the work workforce, um, how I got to be a senior product manager at ICW Permatex, why I'm in the MBA program now, and a couple pieces of advice I can give you um, that will hopefully help you be successful in your careers. Um, I started college by uh, refusing to apply myself and by you know basically trying to slack my way through every class um, just to just to get through them and see if doing minimal effort um, if I could accomplish anything I was immature I didn't really know how to study or, or what was going to be required when I graduated high school because that had been relatively easy um, to get through and to get accepted into a college program so, long story short, I dropped out pretty early. I started working, got a blue collar job, thought that that would be enough for me. And um, just spent several years in the 90s um, and early 2000s just um, making ends meet, living in a one bedroom apartment. Um, I dropped out of school a second time, went to technical school, um, kind of couldn't figure things out, moved up to Connecticut. and. Uh, I got a job, a temp job, at a, uh, a manufacturing facility that made cable boxes um, for the tops of telephone poles. So I was picking parts and uh, processing orders, uh, you know, uh, work orders through uh, Oracle ERP system. So really, the, uh, that was my first real professional work experience. Um, the work was easy, it made sense, the hours were good. I did that for 11 months and then I got laid off and that job moved to Mexico. But I took with me the only marketable skill I'd picked up, which was really Oracle, um, and understanding an ERP system. And I got a job at HID Global um, about three months later. It took me a while, literally living you know, hand to mouth, eating, eating loaves of bread and drinking water from the tap every day uh, because I didn't have enough money um, to buy real groceries. And I was just hoping to pay the rent um, and keep my head above water until I could find a new job. So I got another temp job, and it was at HID Global. Same kind of role, stocking clerk, using Oracle, processing work orders. Um, but I, I really applied myself. I, I worked hard at it. I got hired in 90 days. Um, two years later, I was a shipping clerk. And then uh, shortly thereafter, the lead supply chain associate. Um, the company started to struggle, and um, it was doing well with sales, but we were having trouble meeting demand. We were uh, using old batch and pull, um, you know, pushing product out and just batching it, and hoping that we, you know, made our orders at the end of the month. Um, so we brought in a consultant. He taught us about lean. Um, I bought in. It was a really uh, a great system. I thought made made a lot of logical sense. Um, learned Kanban and. 5S. We uh, started doing Kaizen events and, and process improvement, and I really um, I took to the training well. I, I, I really applied it and found a passion for it, and just really liked um, sort of the competitive nature of making all the different uh, parts of the business run at maximum efficiency and and trying to hit those metrics and deliver on those on those goals each month. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I was sort of inspired by our leader. Um, it was the first time I really saw like that kind of storybook management style of a really inspiring leader coming in and, and modeling the way, challenging all the process and, 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 and um, engaging and empowering all the employees. Um, and so I, I really, I wanted to be like that. I wanted to uh, be a part of that. And uh, so, I applied it to my department. I worked really hard to get our, our department up to its uh, um, most efficient self. And then uh, I got hired to, or promoted into sales, or into customer service and inside sales. Um, I moved from operations onto a sales track. And um, that's where my first piece of advice comes. Um, if anybody ever tells you to uh, think twice about changing career paths or career tracks when you're at an organization um, because once you leave ops you'll be in sales 
and it'll be difficult for you to come back question that um, you can always come back uh, to, a, to another track um, becoming a well-rounded sort of student of business with a lot of experience in different jobs and understanding how all the different departments function and all the they all they all work towards one goal which is creating a profitable company um, that's good experience to get so I would challenge anybody that says that once you you know not not to change career tracks because you might get sidetracked right I left I went into sales I worked there for a while and then when an opportunity came up to be a value stream manager and to build a a new business within the business um, and lead that and, and build a, a data infrastructure and a whole new product line and uh, a new manufacturing process and a new team I was asked to do that and that was on the operations side but it was because I had an understanding of the customer service and sales process of this business um, I had a good rapport with the sales teams I had a good rapport with project managers because of that and I had a good rapport with our internal departments on the production side because I'd been doing customer service and I'd also been on the ops side before. So I knew all the ins and outs of the organization. I was able to um, effectively manage and, and build this um, value stream. So uh, I, would, I would challenge any HR person or anybody else who kind of says not to to branch out and look into other other uh, career tracks as you develop. Um, I did that for several years, grew the business um, tremendously, got my first experience kind of um, with major um, capital expenditures and justifying them to buy new equipment to build this group, um, hiring, um, we hired software engineers uh, that we'd never hired, hired really those kinds of engineers before for this business, now we needed new kinds of talent, um, you know, building the business case to go out and get those resources was, was a new experience for me. Um, after several years, HID decided to move to Austin, Texas, um, where they thought they could consolidate operations and, uh, and improve their efficiency and profitability. I was offered a larger operations role there, um, and I was considering it when I got contacted by a recruiter. Um, who was looking to hire a uh, business unit manager for another business in South Windsor, Connecticut, in a completely different uh, kind of operation, kind of uh, market, but a manufacturing facility, a manufacturing business, all the same. Um, they were interested in my value stream um, background and my lean training. So I took that job, I moved there, I got my first taste of real marketing and product management. Um, I was responsible for the whole business unit of uh, consumable products, and so I was responsible for updating the catalog, um, building out an e-commerce site, and really revamping this part of their business. And uh, so I got to add new products, go out, listen to the voice of the customer, learn all about, um, and become a student of product management, product development, which I had really only had a taste for but never directly managed. So I got into uh, marketing where I really hadn't been before. I'd always been on one side of it, you know, on the ops side telling them kind of what they could market and on the sales side taking what marketing gave me and, and trying to sell it. So it was sort of the third piece of the business I hadn't really been responsible for um, or driven in the past. So I got involved with that and uh, found that I really enjoyed it because uh, sort of the product management role is uh, you have to lead without any um, without many direct reports maybe you'll have one or two but um, typically you're leading cross-functional teams on projects you're um, pushing initiatives through departments that um, have maybe dotted line reports to you um, but understand that you have the responsibility for for creating the product um, they usually have different uh, somewhat different goals than you do or different metrics that they're measured on and so it requires persuasion um, and trust that you'll have to build and credibility with those other departments since you have no positional power over them um, and I like that I like the uh, relationship building and the um, you know, using the background I have from sales and operations to understand what's driving them 
and what they're measured on and uh, building that into or considering that in any product development project we have. Um, you know, we don't want to build a bunch of inventory that we're not going to sell. We don't want to um, maybe create some custom product that we're going to try to make in-house that would disrupt our automated lines. So we have to take things into, con um, into consideration like that. Understand what's, what the uh, drivers are for, for operations or for sales and help uh, make sure that you answer those concerns as you develop products and market them. So that, that was something I enjoyed. Um, I worked there for several years and then um, I was contacted by another uh, a, uh, another recruiter that um, a contact a network in my network had recommended uh, me to for uh, the senior product management role at uh, ITW Permatex where I am today. So piece of advice number two, always work on developing your network and never turn down a connection um, request from a recruiter because once you're in their networks then they'll all see it and um, you know, when you, you'll start coming up in more searches and your, your profile will get, get more, uh, more hits which could lead you to you know, a dream job that you're really passionate about um, it's, it's always good to have the conversation with a recruiter whether you're in the market for a new job or not um, as long as you're discreet and uh, yeah, learn about other opportunities. Never stay married to one organization. I was at HID for 11 years, and I, I thought I'd be there f for the rest of my career, which was sort of naive. And as soon as I was out on the open market, um, I was able to negotiate you know, better, better benefits, better, better salary, um, and realize that I was underpaid because all my promotions had come within one employer. And so, um, I wasn't getting that free market salary, um, that uh, or uh, free agent salary that everybody else gets when they go out there and compete. So, when a company is looking for talent and they're willing to pay for it or looking for a, to fill a position, they're usually willing to pay a little more for it. Um, and so, don't stay anywhere too too long um, unless you're okay just making making less than than you would if you if you looked elsewhere. Um, so I ended up at ITW Permatex. I'm now responsible for, for several brands, um, several product lines, um, and I get to develop and market products that are really exciting for the automotive aftermarket. Uh, popular retail brands that um, have majority share in uh, auto retail, specifically like AutoZone, Advance Auto Parts, O'Reilly's. Um, you can find our products at Walmart. Um, so what's neat now is I make products and, and do marketing um, programs for things that are fairly mainstream that aren't just a B2B product that, that nobody outside of the market sees. It's pretty much a consumer product that everybody could potentially run into or buy. Um, I focused on fast orange hand cleaners and uh, I've gotten to launch some really exciting products. I made a, a, a we made a uh, fast orange laundry detergent because we learned from consumer insights that our customers were um, pre-treating their laundry with our hand cleaners to get grease and oil stains out and we took that and said you know this seems to be really prevalent let's do some some more research let's do some surveys let's go out and visit some end users let's talk to some garages and find out how widespread this is and it turns out it was a very popular practice and that there were still some unmet needs and so we developed this uh, this laundry detergent to meet those needs and uh, we launched it this year and it's done really well so um, that kind of stuff is extremely exciting and gets you kind of passionate about the job it's finding finding those kind of hidden opportunities those, those sort of uh, I don't know, secrets that are out there you know they're not necessarily secrets but they're they're uh, these unmet needs that customers, you know, are talking about amongst themselves in forums and things, and getting those insights and finding the right resources internally to develop, you know, a, a real home run type product. So, and then coming up with a marketing campaign and getting stuff on TV and doing commercials—that's been really exciting. I hadn't hadn't done that previously, but all that, you know, with a bachelor's degree. Um, 
you end up feeling like maybe maybe you still need to go back to school. So I went back um, with tuition reimbursement to get my MBA. Uh, figured I'd take take advantage of that benefit while I had it and um, start learning how to you know get a little bit more out of class, get a little bit more out of school, and apply that uh, apply that to uh, the work that I do today and. Uh, I failed to mention, but I went back and did my bachelor's while I was working at HID, and that was helpful. That got me really into that value stream manager role. I needed a degree for that. I got the degree, um, and that, that helped me move into that role. Um, but even then, I feel like I was just kind of, it was interesting, but I was going through the motions just trying to get through and get back to work, and um, probably didn't get as much from from my bachelor's as I am from my ma my uh, my MBA, I'm definitely spending more time um, applying myself more to the projects. Um, and I'm trying to think, one of the things that I wanted to talk about um, pieces of advice as you get higher up in your uh, responsibility level. Um, I try to always come into work with three things that I absolutely have to get done. I had a mentor um, when I was a business unit manager who told me, you know, every day when you're driving in, don't waste your uh, your commute. You know, kind of turn everything off and quietly consider all the things that you've got on your plate for the day, and identify three key things that you've got to get done. Um, to move the business forward. Everything else, you know, is going to get interrupted with noise and with all the other distractions of the day. So make sure that you get focused on three key things to move the business forward. And do that every single day. And as long as you're nudging those things along every single day and moving those projects forward um, and accomplishing those th three goals, um, you should be successful. It'll definitely keep you on the right path. Um, especially when you're managing multiple projects. Because um, some days there won't be anything to do on certain projects, and other days there will be a lot to do on them. So just keep moving them forward, keep focused on those three priorities, and sort of 80-20 your work day. Um, you know, focus on the 20% of things that are going to you know, affect 80% of your sales. Right? you got to focus on the, the smaller list of priorities that will have the biggest impact make sure that your efforts are in the right place. Um, and I guess that's, uh, that's really it. Um, yeah, thanks for listening.